My dear friends, for this uh, sixth Sunday in the ordinary time, we just heard the Beatitudes from the book of uh, St. Luke. And um, the Beatitudes is the introduction to the Gospel of Jesus. It outlines the main principles of the Gospel. And it is like a path. It is like the road that Jesus has made for us to follow and to journey to reach eternal life, to reach heaven. And so, um, to be honest, um, the whole week I have been, you know, I have been away for two weeks and um, I was trying to finalize my homily yesterday uh, in the morning and I was staring out of the window. I said, Lord, I have nothing else to say. You know, I have been talking about these themes and topics. I'm running out of theology, you know. And um, because I always do that, I, I listen, you know, I read the gospel and then listen to what the Lord wants to tell you. Because that's our role. We are just um, um, a, a voice box, you know, that brings out what God wants to tell you. So, um, I heard about 2 o'clock before the confessions, I heard like a voice telling me, why don't you share your experience? You know, why don't you um, uh, share with the people your journey? Of course, I'm kind of hesitant to do that because uh, some people think I'm, I'm cuckoo, you know, <laughs> or, <laughs> or I have a big head. Um, but I'm a pastor, okay? I'm a pastor, and to tell you, thousands of people come here every week to be nurtured, to be inspired. And we are poor priests. Uh, we are just sound boxes. The real star here is God and the Lord Jesus. We, we listen. We are servants. It's not about us. So, being loyal to that role as pastor, it is my responsibility to guide you and to inspire you. But I cannot get that from the air. I have to get that from my own journey of faith. Because, you know, like a guide in the amusement park, you cannot be a guide unless you are familiar with the park, right? How can you guide if you do not know? How can I talk of something here that I have not gone through? Okay? So that is my experience of faith and that I share with you. That's the honest uh, reason to be able to share with you the truths of the gospel with sincerity and conviction and not just inventing my own. So that's the motivation why I'll share with you my journey. Now, I have been away for two weeks for a uh, medical procedure that I uh, was trying to deny the symptoms uh, because you are so, sometimes you get carried away by work, you know, and so many things to do. Um, but thank God to my loyal staff, especially Cindy who went through this I said, Father, you have to see our cardiologist. There are some symptoms that we have seen. So I was trying to uh, postpone it and, you know, um, the pride that I'm okay, you know, I'm okay. But no, he said, you have two weeks. Get out of here and uh, see a doctor. So they did the, the uh, uh, stress uh, test and they found something and... Uh, I was scheduled for catharization, so I got scared, very scared, because I don't know what will happen, and I don't want to go to the knife again, you know, after the accident. So, um, the uh, three days before the procedure were, uh, were very difficult. I, um, I got scared. Um, but, you know, I've said this before, in your darkest moments, the ones who love you most are with you. 
You know, in your difficult and darkest moments, the ones who care for you, who truly love you, are with you. I saw angels in visions. I saw my parents, the souls of my departed classmates, trying to guide me and help me and inspire me. And so um, during the, the procedure, they prepped me uh, before I entered into the lab. And I look around. I have seen this place before already. I have seen these plastic curtains, these mirrors. I've seen these monitors already. And then the, the doctor said, Pastor, did you pray a lot last night? Uh, I told him, you know, I had visions of heaven, which is true. And then he told me with a smile, he said, I want all my patients to go to heaven, but not today. You know, <laughs> it can wait later on. But then, you know, the experience, um, I saw my classmate who died of stroke a year ago, and then we went through the same procedure, and, but at the end he said, Peter, I am staying here. He died a year ago, but you have to go on. You have to go on. You know, and then when I got out of the room in a vision, I saw this little angel who gave me a set of keys. I said, what are these? He said, these are the keys of the buildings you have to build. You know, you will be building in four months. These are the keys that he gave me. And then another angel guided me. We went to a, like a mansion. You know, beautiful, so beautiful, beyond description. The design, the halls, the colors, and the materials, the detailed, uh, intricate um, building. It was so beautiful, beyond description. And then the crystal work, the glass, the colors, I've never seen before. It was so beautiful, and I felt joy and peace, and I told him, I want to stay. This is so beautiful. This is, I have never dreamed of a place like this. And then uh, he said, not yet. You know, and then he guided me through uh, like a path. I saw the ground. It was very vivid. The soil is unpaved, a little bit stony and winding, difficult to walk. But he was holding me. He said, this is the path that you have to travel. You have to move on. And uh, I was wondering yesterday, talking about the Beatitudes, this path that is winding and difficult to walk is the Beatitudes that you just read and heard. The path that will lead to heaven. As I was walking, I said, I already saw heaven. I already was there. I'm not letting go. I'm getting back there. I'm getting back there. You know, I will not let go. I, that is the, where I want to go. But before that, this is the path I have to tread. You know, the Beatitudes. Guys, heaven is real. I have been there. I'm not letting go. It is real. See you there. Okay. <laughs>